Hey everybody, this is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop and our Sunday evening blog. Well, what we have for you this weekend, oh my goodness, can't forget these things. All right, and our script. I truly am trying to keep these videos in a timely fashion, so last week it was a little over the top, I know. All right, this week for our blog we have VCarve Pro scaling and adjusting vector images. Now, there's a mouthful, huh? When we refer to scaling something, we either increase or enlarge it, or we shrink it and we make it smaller. Well, this is going to be in direct relation to, uh, to last weekend's VCarve Pro fireplace mantle scene design or tutorial. We did it in three pieces during last week. One gentleman was just a little confused on, uh, on how to mark up the material, get it in the machine, and I'm hoping the shout out on Wednesday kind of cleared that up. Anytime I can, uh, I can reiterate something on one of the videos, please, guys. Just give me a shout, shoot me an email, just let me know what you need, all right? And uh, a good buddy of mine, another gentleman by the name of Fred, you know, he was absolutely correct in saying that I had kind of foregone a chunk of the video, which is basically created this one for the weekend. This will be the final end of. Uh, this whole fireplace mantle project, but again, this is going to be applicable to more things down the road for you guys, all right? Well, why scale images, okay? Well, whenever we scale an image, <laughs> we want to have symmetry. We want to have a good symmetrical design and layout. I think I showed you in the beginning of the video when we pulled that image in with the cabin and the bear and the trees. Well, the bear, by God, goodness gracious, he was almost as big as the cabin. Well, there was no symmetry there. And if I had kept him that big, he would have looked foolish. You know, it would be like taking this, this nice, highly defined white tail buck uh, and shrinking him down to, you know, right now he's 16 inches tall by 20 inches wide from hoof to nose. Uh, you may not see it from, uh, from that angle on the camera, but if I shrink him down from 16 inches in height down to 4, well now all the, uh, all the uh, tooling lines are going to get jammed that much closer together. So ultimately what happens when you run your V-bit on minimal, minimal size imagery that's packed full of detail, well what used to be there for space that would, that would provide a normal uh, engraving area has now shrunk so much that when you go to engrave, the actual width, depending upon the depth of your bit, is going to create such a wide track, it's going to cut things on each side of it that it was not meant to. And we're going to go into greater detail in just a minute with the VCarve Pro uh, tutorial, alright? But I wanted to, uh, I just wanted to let everybody know kind of what, the, what was up with the blog this weekend. Uh, we go deeper into detail on the blog. We talk about, uh, you know, what V bits you should use. We'll, uh, We'll talk about the cutting depths, we're going to talk about the feeds and speeds, how to come up with them. It's going to vary though guys, ladies and gentlemen, it will vary from machine to machine. Like I said, somebody running more of a home hobby style machine may only have like a one horse. <laughs> and you're not going to be able to run the RPMs on, on that small router like you are with that gentleman out there who's got that big massive spindle. I'm kind of middle of the boat myself, I bought the largest router I could get for my machine. Uh, you know, my cutting speeds are generally between 12 to 16, 18 thousandths tops. Other guys are running things over 20, okay? Well, hey, you know, we have to work within the boundaries that we have. Again, you know, that's what promoted last weekend's video was how to stretch these scenes out regardless of your, uh, your equipment size, okay? So, if you guys want to hang on, we're going to jump down to the, uh, to the home office. We're going to... Uh, we're going to take and we're going to do the screen capture with Camstasia uh, video editing software and we will bring you the programming end of how to go in, clean up some of the detail out of that black bear so that we're able to mill him and you don't end up with a, uh, with a long run and, and the outcome is going to be this nasty bear that's going to basically be a glorified silhouette when it's done, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, you hang on. We'll be right back and uh, we've got more to come.